Good day. In this session, we will be discussing existing and emerging technology in teaching and learning. For uh, our discussion, we will be touching on existing and emerging technologies and then on a framework on how to pick the tool for a specific activity. For the existing and emerging technologies, I, will be, I have divided them into several categories. There are activity tools, video tools, assessment tools, gamification tools, social media tools, authoring tools, collaboration tools, and virtual worlds. The criteria I've um, used for picking these tools are that they are web-based, no need to download and no need to install, and that they are free. For the activity tools, I've divided them into several categories too. There's discussion, whiteboards, infographic tools, presentation tools, and timeline makers. For the discussion tools, I've picked um, Collaborize Classroom, where you can see you can manage discussion forums and create discussion forums. And I've also been using Google Hangouts, the chat feature of Google Hangouts for uh, discussion boards, it, because for learners who are quite used to messaging, uh, Google Hangouts has that feature where they receive their messages or uh, discussion messages at like a messaging feature, like a texting uh, message. Next is for, the, for other discussion tools, if you have a learning management system, there are usually discussion board tools included. The, for whiteboard tools, um, whiteboards are usually used for collaboration, for brainstorming. So the tools I've picked for this is Tazit. As you can see, it's, they're all just blank pages where you can write on them, whether it's handwritten or uh, typewritten. Sketchlot is another tool. Twidla and Studo are other tools for whiteboards. The next is infographic. For infographics, you can have your students uh, create um, a summary with uh, graphics of what they've learned or um, a poster of what they've learned to, just to reflect and summarize their, um, the content. So for these, the tools I've picked are Canva, PictoChart, and Vengage. Vengage is really good because it tracks, uh, it has analytics, so it can track your, the people that have viewed your infographic. For presentation, we have PowerPoint, of course, and PhotoPeach. PhotoPeach is basically um, a slide maker for photos, and same for Kizoa, but with Kizoa, you can use uh, videos too in your presentation. For timeline makers, for uh, usually use timeline makers to have students uh, maybe summarize the history of um, of a topic or the history of a theory. So the tools I've used for this is history, capsules, and time glider, where you can see that there are dates uh, at the bottom for you to mark the the year or the date for the event. The next uh, category are videos, and we use videos because they are more engaging, demonstration friendly, and because of the visual cues, it facilitates thinking and problem solving. So for video tools, I've picked ones where you can edit your video, and the first one is YouTube Editor and Powtoon. Powtoon can help you make uh, animated videos. And an emerging technology in video is interactive videos where you can add questions or add a discussion board within the video. So the tools that you can use to make interactive videos are Vialogs, Edpuzzle, and PlayPosit. And usually, if you're doing videos, you need to, sometimes you need to edit audio too. So there's Cheerbit and Audacity for audio editing. The next category for technology tools are, is programming. And this is becoming very popular with learners right now because um, 
uh, this is a skill that's quite important. And uh, I've picked some websites where you can uh, take courses on programming languages. So the first one is Code Academy. The next one is Scratch, where they say from a nine-year-old to a 99-year-old can use it, and it teaches you the logic of programming. And also, Khan Academy has a lot of programming uh, courses that you can sign up for. The next uh, technology tool is assessment tools. And for this, I've picked classtools.net. It's a website where you can create your own uh, assessment tools from crossword puzzles to multiple choice quizzes, or you can use existing ones from the website. There's also Quiz Revolution and Yaka Paka, which also has existing quizzes that you can just use or you can build your own. For games, I've picked Kahoot for to create or to play games for your students. And also you can do badges that you can give out to your students for every achievement that they've attained. So there's onlinebadgemaker.com and for websites where you can have your students access games, there's education.com, uh, funbrain.com, sciencebob.com, brainios.com, and the Utah Education Network website. With social media, um, this is becoming very popular too since this is something that the learners are um, using every day. So you can have them do a blog, uh, and have the, the tools for that is WordPress, Blogger, and Wix, where they can journal, write a journal for their learning or just uh, post their answers on their blogs. You can also use chat or messaging tools to uh, keep in contact with the, your learners. So there's Google Hangouts, Line, Messenger, and Viber. Facebook groups are good to use too for um, collaborating or just keeping in touch and with your students. Google Plus can be used the same way. For authoring tools where if you want to make your own modules, a self-contained module, um, these are the tools to use. There's Easy Generator, Smart Builder, and Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, for Screencast-O-Matic, this is one tool that you will have to download and install. And this doesn't really create a, a self-contained module, but it captures your screen so that if you want to do a demo of a software, uh, you can use Screencast-O-Matic. For collaboration tools, we have video conferencing, and you can use Google Hangouts for that. And for project collaboration, you have Yammer, which looks a lot like uh, Facebook. So you can add your students here and they can communicate and keep their files here. Basecamp operates the same way. And then there's Google Apps for Education, where you can use Google Docs or Google Sheets to collaborate on a document. Same with Wikispaces, where you just add your students and you can collaborate on a topic. For virtual worlds, I only have one uh, tool, and that's Second Life. And for this tool, too, uh, you have to download and install. So with all those tools that I've mentioned, how do you know which tools to use? Little John and Pegler designed a matrix based on Laurie Lard's conversational model based on the type of activities. And these type of activities are assimilative, adaptive, communicative, productive, and experiential. So for the first one, assimilative, and this is just processing narrative media, managing and structuring information. For, so for this type of activity, you can do lectures or videos or just reading text. So the technology you can use here is word processors where they can do concept mapping and brainstorming or presentation software and um, or crossword puzzles. And the next activity is adaptive and this is where an, an environment that changes according to learner input. 
So the technologies for this are virt virtual worlds where they can do simulation and games and interactive videos. The next type of activity is communicative where your students can discuss whether it's asynchronous or synchronous discussions. And here you can use electronic whiteboards or discussion boards, instant mes messaging and video conferencing. The next type of activity is productive, where learners produce something. So they can create a book or a report, an essay or journal, a literature review. Um, they can compose or synthesize. So for the technologies, you can use image editing technologies, infographic tools, the timeline maker, and other project collaboration tools. The last type of activity is experiential, and these are interactive activities that focus on problem solving. So with this, your learners will be practicing and applying what they have learned. So you can do case studies or experiments and laboratory experiments in a virtual lab or interactive videos. And this ends our discussion for existing and emerging technologies and I hope that it will help you um, pick the tools that you will need for your teaching.